Hey everyone, welcome to the Intro to One Plan webinar. We are so thrilled to have you join us here today. My name is Heather and I'm the Senior Customer Success Manager and Product Specialist here at One Plan. I have a pretty fun history of event planning in my past from a local not-for-profit music festival, some years with Ticketmaster and Live Nation, even some time spent with a small Canadian ticketing startup. I love everything about live events, planning, attending, even planning to attend. It's no wonder that I love what we do here at One Plan, and I'm really excited to show you how quick and easy planning an event in One Plan can be. I'll go through the process, show you some tools, and then we will connect with Renem Hayden, associate producer for New Sound Concerts and Soulfest, our guest for today's webinar. Afterwards, we will open up the chat for some Q&A. So jot down any questions you have as we go along. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, Heather Bray here, Senior Customer Success Manager and Product Specialist for OnePlan. We're gonna go over what OnePlan is, who we are, what we do, and how you can use OnePlan to effectively and efficiently plan your event. A little bit about OnePlan. OnePlan was founded in 2018 by Paul Foster from the UK with a mission to provide planning solutions for event professionals across the globe one plan has quickly become the preferred planning tool of choice. From sport to fairs and shows, festival teams and security experts, event professionals plan in one plan. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to go to oneplanevents.com and take a look around our website. Here, here you'll find sections such as events, solutions, resources and pricing, a website rich with information. The good news is anyone can access one plan and anyone can access one plan for free. You can plan one event with one user entirely for free. So if you haven't done this already, I encourage you to sign up and work alongside me or after this call, jump right in and see what the software can do for your event. So first things first, let's sign up. By clicking on the top right hand corner under sign up for free, you'll get to this page and it's that easy. There's no credit card required. You can enter your email address and create a password, click sign up and you'll be off to the, off to the races. From there, you'll log into your OnePlan Studio. This is what mine looks like. Mine's quite busy, it's full of stuff. On the left-hand side, we've got an itemized list of all of our events. In the middle, we've got a visual tile list of all of our site plans. Up along the top, we'll have a rich resource of templates for you. Please look in here. Right now, we've got one for a general event management form. This is something you can download and use to plan out your event, keeping you on track, and also offering tips and tricks with how to use one plan. We've got an arrival and evacuation calculators. These two tools will help you assess how to get people onto your site and then also how to evacuate people from your site. If along the way you need any help, we encourage you to click this button up here, need help, or this little chat face down at the bottom where you'll be connected with a live support professional. Like other platform tools, you will have a bunch of profile information that can be found here by clicking this little arrow, such as language selection, where you can also choose your unit of measure. You'll see plan details, address, payment details, etc. All right, so let's get started. Before we jump in, you'll notice we have these active little bubbles around the site. Some are videos and some are text. These are here to help you. Click on them in order to see a one to two minute video teaching you about the particular feature or click and receive a text bubble that will help you along the way. All right, let's get started. We are gonna call this webinar test. It'll take place in Canada. And let's do it at the Calgary Olympic Saddle Dome. Bonus points for anyone who can remember which year this facility was created and for which event for. If you'll see my email at the end of the uh, webinar, and if you're particularly competitive, shoot me an email and let me know which event this place was built for. So we hit create event. Right now what's happening is our systems are quickly looking for Olympic Saddle Dome. That wasn't very specific. It could be maybe there are three Olympic saddle domes. Let's see what we get. As expected, our intuitive systems are able to accurately find the location when we go to build our map. 
So here we have it. This is the Olympic Saddle Dome. If anyone is familiar with the location, this location is home to the world famous Calgary Stampede. And here's the grandstand. So taking a step back and looking at the tools that we have here, you'll see that we have the screen set up in sections. The left hand side is what I call the toolbar or the ruler. It's where all of our pieces live. If we need to jump to another event, we can click this drop down arrow, quickly allowing us to time hop into the other events that we have in our studio for quick and easy reference. We have a version tool, a button that is indicating that something exciting is coming very soon, as well as our connectivity bar. The, the connectivity bar will indicate if you are A, connected to the internet, and B, if our systems are live. Now, if this button is red, that means that our systems are not live, and I have never seen that happen. However, I have had a bit of a problem with my internet, and that has caused this button to be red. So what I do is I just simply wait, because we are a cloud-based software, I can close this window and all of my work will be saved if the light is green. If it's red, simply wait until your connectivity has resumed, and then you can close your window and your work will be saved as usual. Over here, we have some administrative features that will make more sense as we move along. So it is important to note that we do have a unit of measure toggle here, as well as some other items that will be described when you hover your mouse on top of them. Now we've got our canvas. Right now, I'm looking at a map that's easily recognizable. This is our Google satellite map. We can opt to have this in black and white, which is actually quite spectacular for presentations as the items placed on top of it are in rich color and they will pop from the canvas. We also have Google Street Map. Now this view is really good for giving people directions, how to get to your site, how to access it, um, suppliers, letting them know how to get to where you are. Now I'm gonna stay in satellite mode because it is something that I recognize. By scrolling on my mouse, we're using this feature down in the right hand corner with the magnifying glasses. I can zoom in and zoom out accordingly as I need. Now, when you log in, depending on your region, you may also notice one additional tab here with the letters HD on it. That is our HD high definition map. If possible, I always recommend planning in that mode as that mode presents um, a map that is a result of low flying aerial aircraft. It gives you a much crisper picture as well as the ability to zoom with increased clearness. It also has a time machine feature, so a little drop down menu that will allow you to go back in time and see what your site looked like in years past. All right, so we've got our event here. We've created an event, we're ready to go. Let's get started. Over on our left hand toolbar or ruler, we have many objects. Placed objects is gonna act like a table of contents for everything that we place, get everything that gets placed on our map. Of course, we haven't placed anything yet, so there's nothing in there now. Let's keep that closed for the time being. Layouts, layouts is also empty and something that we can do for our event planners are import CAD drawings. Now this is important because you might already have an existing site map that you love to use, but you need the other solutions that one plan offers, such as increased shareability, keeping everybody on the same page, and of course, the recognizable CAD map that's to scale that you know and love. In order to have one of these uploaded, you need to be subscribed to the professional plan or higher. You do have the option to do an a la carte purchase if you're using our free tier, that just requires a little bit more manual work, so you can reach out to me if that is something that is interesting to you. Areas, routes, and access. Now, if I'm planning my event, there are certain things that I must do. I need to know what the areas are going to be called, and this can have numerous implications. For our intents and purposes, let's look at this view and let's, let's plan out a family, a family fair. So I'm going to open the area tool and I'm going to choose the area color that I would like. For this instance, I'm going to block off this parking lot. I simply click to start drawing, click to change direction, double click to finish my shape. As I do that, you will notice this little men menu pops up on the right hand side. We call this the properties menu. Now all of this is really cool. Being able to see everything in our toolkit as well as a real to scale accurate to the centimeter map of what we need to plan 
is awesome, but that's not where it stops. One plan is so much more than a visual representation of your planning. With this properties menu, we have the ability to fully customize everything that we're placing on the map, as well as gather really important data that you'll see in these items here that will then be fed through to a series of downloadable, downloadable excuse me, and shareable reports. So we've got our area. Let's call this kids area. If I wanted to, I could duplicate, add a label, lock or unlock the item, or get rid of it. An insider tip, if you're planning and you've placed many different items on your map, I recommend highlighting the item and using the delete key on your keyboard. We've hotkeyed it for quick and efficient changes to your map. Alternatively, you can use this little trash can, but it is small, so good luck. Now this area tool calculates the area as well as the capacity based on the concentration of people per square meter. So if we go with a mid-size capacity, a mid-size density, excuse me, our capacity numbers change. So this is entirely a uh, smart software that will calculate that for you. So we've called this the kids area. Great, I can click out, the menu will go away and I can move on to planning. Let's close the areas tab and let's look at parking. For parking, I'm gonna choose this turquoise color and we're gonna throw in a parking lot over here. Again, click to start drawing, click to change direction and double click to seal the deal. We now have parking area turquoise. I can leave it as such or I can rename it. Perhaps I'm gonna call it parking area east. Maybe it's staff only. All of this information can be added. We also calculate the square meters or feet, depending on your choices. It will also calculate the number of cars, the number of people that it can be serviced based on some criteria, one or two way flow, and the number of people in a car. So if we insist that people fill up their minivans, I can put seven people per car, and suddenly the amount of people that this parking lot will service has jumped exponentially. Now this is important for planning in many ways. This will help you determine site viability. When scouting for a new site, these tools are very effective in letting you know if this is the site for you based on the infrastructure nearby. All right, let's close that and let's add a route. I'm gonna indicate that people are going to walk um, the longest, most zigzaggy path for demo purposes only to get to our kids area. I click to draw, click to change direction, and I pay attention to the ticker tape and the many units of measure above, and I double click. We've now placed a route. It measures the distance as well as the walking time based on the average speed. This tool is fantastic for road races. You can plan out many different routes. Perhaps your 10K will be in red, your 20K in orange, and maybe you have a kid's fun run in lime green. All of these items are then tracked and fed into reports indicating distance, walking speed, and the names that you've decided to name your routes. Cool, hey? Now, everything in one plan is to scale, so all of this is accurate to the centimeter. If we zoom in and I see that I have cut across the lawn here, I can expect that when I arrive on site, I will need to cut across the lawn, just as the image. It's not a guess, it's not an estimate, it is accurate. And that is why people love one plan. Now we do have some bits and pieces that are not to scale. Let me show you those. We have a really huge library of icons. They're growing every day. By clicking on the item that says icon, this one's an accessible parking icon, I can go ahead and lay that on our map. From here, I can grab the item, move it to where I'd like it to sit, I can give it a spin. I can alter the size here based on these scales. I can make a giant, mid-size or smaller, whatever your needs are. I can quickly duplicate this too. There, we've got two. And we move them around and suddenly we've indicated um, where our accessible parking is. Except the joke's on me because I put the accessible parking in the area. No big deal. This is how easy it is to make changes in one plan. There, done. Anyone who's logged in would have seen me make that change. They'd see my cursor move. They'd hear me laugh on the phone and go, whoops, that's in the wrong spot. And that's important. There are no more outdated images, no more outdated CAD maps. And best of all, the information is current 
and fun and easy to use. So we've talked a little bit about some of our area tools. Let's go on to infrastructure. Now, every event planner knows you always need some sort of barrier control. For the purpose of today, I'm gonna to show you how to place some fencing. A fun tip, I always like to pick the items that have the name custom in the title. Some of them, they do have preset measurements and that's not always the same in every area of the world. So I would recommend picking the item that says custom. I've got it here because I can see my little plus sign cursor and I wanna fence in my parking lot. I wanna make sure this is a really secure space. So I'm gonna start click to draw, click to change direction, and I'm just gonna outline this parking lot a little bit like so. I can see my ticker tape moving. I'm gonna double click to end the drawing. We've placed a fence. Let's take a closer look. I can rename the fence. Again, I can duplicate, add a label, lock, or turf the fence. From the information gathered, I've made a 168 meter long fence, which means that if my segments are 2.5 meters, I will need 71. Our system is so smart that it adds a 5% buffer like most suppliers uh, expect. However, my supplier doesn't have 2.5 meter. They only have 4.5. All I need to do is update the field, watch the segments, they immediately update, and gone are the days are of over or under ordering. Now we can go a little bit further here. Supplier, let's let the computer know where we're getting our fencing from. I happen to love fences are us. I got a great deal. This fence is costing me $10. And you know, as an event planner, I need to know, and I need to let my productions on-site teams know when Fences or Us will be dropping off this product and when I need to have it ready for pickup. I am sure every one of you on this call has an awkward story about pickup, people being radioed, chaos at the gates, we don't need to do that anymore. We've got this here. Everyone that has access to this sitemap can pull up this information. So there are no more excuses or reasons why we need to have disorganization game day on site. All right, so we've added that information. I'm gonna click away and I'll show you where that goes in just a moment. Now, as you're all gonna go sign up for your free plan, I really recommend that you spend a good bulk of your time in the infrastructure tab. A lot of um, our work goes into building out these categories to be robust and full and answers for every, every sort of event planner. We've done some fencing. What's something else that most events have many of? It's gonna be tents. Let's go to our tent tab. I'm gonna grab a sky blue tent and maybe I'm gonna put a few tents right over here in this cul-de-sac. So just like that, I've placed my tent. I'm gonna give it a little nudge, move it around. You know, I could work on my angle. I can do that really easily there. Now I can go over to my properties menu and add some information. Now, every event needs food vendors. Let's put some of those in here. Uh, this is gonna be the up and coming gourmet Heather's hot dogs. I could duplicate this tent. Maybe Heather's hot dogs has taken off so brilliant, brilliantly that we're going to have two locations. We're going to move the other one over here. You'll notice that as I hit duplicate, the item is exactly duplicated, including the title. So if you want to have different name vendors, duplicate your tents before you add information like names. So back at Heather's hot dogs, number one, I can see that the unit of measure, my tent is currently five meters by five meters, but I don't work like that. I need 10 meters by 12 meters. I need a really big tent. You'll see that as I add the information into our properties menu, it's reflected on the map. Again, remember this is entirely to scale. This is not something that is a guess. So we've got our tent. Let's click on it to get that menu back. We can add, tons of more information. These fields are left blank. You really do have the flexibility to add information that you need there. Now, like I showed you earlier, we can add our tent supplier. Let's get these tents from Tent City. We'll quickly throw in some cost. We have an in and out date, and that's great. We now have our supplier information in there. It's gonna be kept, it's gonna be organized in one spot, easily accessible details. Now, 
vendor management. And we're really proud of this tool. Vendor management is a big job. And we are really aware that there are really big companies doing really big things with vendor management. We wanted to offer a simple solution to our planners to get them started and get them on the right track. So our vendor zone, let's build one. We have our food alley. I have sold this tent to Heather's Hot Dogs. H is H. Power. I'm gonna need power. I'm definitely gonna make some gray water. I am gonna need fresh water. I definitely wanna check my Instagram and I am going to need a table for ketchup, mustard, etc. So I have now put so much footprint information into the system. I'm gonna close it. It's gonna go away and keep, put a pin in that. We're gonna revisit that shortly. So imagine your site plan mapped out with areas, zones, traffic flow, routes, parking lot, tents, vendors, stages, infrastructure. It's all in here. In the event that you're going through this list and you don't see what you need, we have a team of support professionals that are ready to receive these ideas for you. As brilliant as we all think one plan is, it didn't get to be this brilliant because of one brain. It is like this because we really do listen to our guests. And a lot of these ideas that you see in here are suggested and built for users just like you. Next up, workforce, such an important part of an event plan. I have experience working for a not-for-profit music festival where there was a small handful of paid staff and 2,000 volunteers. Can you imagine keeping track of them all in a spreadsheet? Maybe that worked back then, but there's a better way. Let me show you. We've got all of these dots where we can place our workforce across our site. Perhaps we need to have some, some traffic control at the gates. The dot says medical. I think medical should be, should be security, so I can rename it. I can rename it team lead. I can even go so far as to put in someone's name. I can use the in and out date as a loose scheduler, letting my teams know when the bulk of their teams need to be on site. Huge rainbows of colors here. Have some fun with it. Later on, I can show you how we can isolate the different layers and the different items to create many maps within one. Tools, this is my favorite section um, of one plan. Let's take a peek. We've got rulers, grids, triangles, and my favorite tool, measure line red. You don't have to leave your office every time you need information from your site. I can go ahead and measure the width of this road simply by using my drawing tool, my measuring tape, excuse me, dragging it across, and getting the information that I need in the click of a button, saving my time, my resources, money, gas, and trips down to site. Visualization, another favorite tool of me. We all know it's complicated to work on big remote teams. Let's use the tools that we have to make it easier. My favorite one is the image pin. I can go ahead and lay an image pin up by Heather's Hot Dogs number two. You'll see that the request is pending and it is now placed. I'm going to move our little pin and how this works in our properties menu, we see this big action button. I can upload a file, whether it's how does my sponsor want their signage hung or how to execute a particular task. How should something look before we dust off our hands and call it done? I can provide photographic evidence simply by uploading a full, uh, excuse me, a photo here and hovering my mouse above that little pin. It's that easy. We can make it even more fun by adding a video, a text box, a note. The options are limitless. We do have a crowd management tool as well as branding and signage tools that work similarly to the image pin. Now, if I'm a marketing team and I'm responsible for signage for my site, I can place every piece of signage that I have onto the map like so and I can upload the creative asset that belongs on that sign. No more emails lost, no more spreadsheets. Keep it in one plan. Marketing managers love this tool. It's a quick and easy way to have a visual reminder of where your signs are gonna be. Sponsor changes his mind at the last minute and you need to import new artwork, that's fine. Just delete the image and put a new one in. It's completely updated in your one plan report. Furniture, we do have a nice big furniture section because you can plan in indoor spaces. Remember when I mentioned about the CAD earlier? We can add a CAD, click on a building, 
the roof peels off, revealing a perfectly to scale CAD. You can use these furniture pieces for conferences, for um, artist areas, reception areas. Again, so many opportunities to plan both outside and indoor. We really do excel at hybrid spaces. Now, don't overlook this. This is our more menu. Here, we've got various uh, segments planned out, specialty little sections. I have a couple of favorites myself. One of them is the Christmas markets. I know it's June, but Christmas is coming and we're gonna wanna get on our plans soon. Click inside these to find a whole bunch of augmented specialty areas that work alongside the tools that we have in our core platform. Even if you're not planning a fair and show, I recommend that you check out all of these areas in order to get the most out of our system. Now, we've looked at everything on the map. What else can one plan do? Let's go back to our homepage. All right, here's our event, webinar test. Let's click in. So here we've got our visual piece of one plan. This is our site map. There's so much more that we can do. A few things to note, we can duplicate an event. Is the 2022 event done, but you loved your site map and you have no need to create one from scratch for 2023? Duplicate your event. Everything will be the same. The changes you make in the new copy will be for your new year and you can still have that historical information of the previous year. Don't like your event plan, need to make more space in your studio? You can delete the map from here as well. Now, before I mentioned that we have these really high functioning reports, this is where they all live. This is our reports tab. Here's one of our handy, handy dandy tutorials. You can click there and see how the bill of quantities will work for you. Let me tell you a little bit about it. The bill of quantities aggregates everything that you've put on your map visually into an itemized CSV format. So from here, we can click in and we can see all of the information that we've used. Now, these reports are only gonna be as good as the information that we put into our right-hand side property menu. So here, you'll see I got nice and descriptive. I used all of the fields to communicate information. From here, you'll see everything broken out into sections. I encourage you to explore this report as it's gonna be one of your closest allies in event planning. Let's go back. We also have a report for crowd areas, walking routes, parking, signage, dot planning, and my personal favorite, vendor management. Let's take a peek. Here you'll see that I've updated all of the fields in the right-hand side properties menu vendor management portion. All of that information has carried through. At a glance, I know I've got a good solid start to my vendor management program. From here, I can export to CSV, choose to add more columns. Have they signed a contract? Have I sent them a tax receipt? All of those sorts of things can be added after the fact, but you have a solid start right here in one plan. All right, so after reports, we've got the details tab. I consider this the cover letter of your event. Do you need to change the, the location of your event? Are you opening your map only to have it kind of jump to another location? Let's fix that. Put in a more detailed address here and that will no longer be an issue. Olympic Saddle Dome worked for me. There's only one of those in the world. So simply by having Canada and the Saddle Dome, our systems knew where to go. I can add information like start and end date, add information for the organization, summarize my event for all key event management contacts here, and add some control points. All of that is up to you. Don't forget to add save. Now, one of the neatest parts of OnePlan is the ability to collaborate and share. Like I said, when one or more users are in the studio and in the site plan, working collaboratively, you will see cursors moving around, making for a really uh, team building experience. Here, it's as easy as this. Let's add an email. I can decide if I want to allow somebody to edit or be an administrator or simply have view only mode by clicking save. I have now added the Heather Bray at gmail.com, that's me, to our team of users. There are many options here. I can see the last update and the last time the person has accessed the event. And honestly, if I need them to not have access, revoking 
is as easy as a click of a button. And there we have it. It's really that easy. It's been 29 minutes since we started this webinar and we've got a solid start to our event plan. We've gone through almost every element within one plan. And it's really that easy. I can share with my team members. I can share with suppliers. I can share with board members at the click of a button. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I've enjoyed spending some time with you. Um, our team is really proud to present this product to you and we're constantly working on it, which leads me to my next bit. We love feedback here at OnePlan. And if you've watched this presentation and said, that's awesome, this would be perfect. It would solve all of my problems, except for this one. I encourage you to send me an email, heather.bray at oneplanevents.com and let me know what that is. If you think this is close, but you know, I really need this, let me know. We'd love to hear it. The good, the bad, and even the ugly. We take it to heart. We talk about it as a team. And we're pleased to action on those items, bringing you a world-class software that's going to solve your planning pain points. So again, thanks for joining me on this portion of the webinar. And in just a few moments, we're going to sit down with Rena from SoulFest. And she's going to tell us a little bit about herself, her events, her history, and why OnePlan has made such a giant difference to her as an event planner. Thanks again, and let's go chat with Rena. Hey, Rena, thanks for coming to our webinar today. I'm excited to chat with you. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to our crowd. Uh, everyone, we've got Rena Muhyden here. She's the associate producer for New Sound Concerts and Soul Fest. So welcome. Hi, Heather. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Uh, before we get started talking a little bit about your planning adventure and how you've been using OnePlan, I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that you've been doing this for what feels like forever. You've got multiple festivals under your belt. So tell us a little bit about how you got into event planning and what brought you to this point. Yeah, so um, I actually went to Soul Fest as a kid. It was my first concert experience, first festival experience, and it just kind of changed my life just being there seeing a band on stage for the first time and I knew that I wanted to be in this business of live music and I had no talent whatsoever to sing or play an instrument and no desire to be on stage either I'm very much a behind the scenes person um, so I went to school for entertainment business and when I moved back home did other things for a little while and finally reached out to SoulFest and they had an opportunity available for me, uh, marketing actually, but uh, it was, a, it was a foot in the door. So it wasn't long after that, that I kind of just took on whatever they gave me. And now I'm doing site planning for them. That's amazing. So you totally got bit by the bug and I, it's amazing that you started out with marketing and then you've kind of traveled throughout, throughout the hoops. Uh, site planning. That's what we're all here for. I'd love you to tell us a little bit more about what you were using to plan your site. Was it cumbersome? What were things you loved about the tools you were using? And what were things that were challenges? Yeah, so um, didn't love anything about the tools that we were using. Um, we were using Photoshop primarily um, and some math equations uh, in Google Earth to try to figure out how big certain shape should be on our map. And luckily when I came into that part of the role, there was already a map built. So it was only really tweaking things here and there, but without any Photoshop experience at all, it was, it was awful. Um, it took me forever to kind of move things around on the map. And then if you click the wrong thing in Photoshop, you'd raster size it and you, there's no going back. I don't know. Uh, so it just, it wasn't working. I've redone the map a couple of times and, uh, it was, I was kind of dreading going into the festival, uh, our first festival after COVID, just knowing that I was going to have to do the map and, uh, and I got one fateful email. <laughs> 
That's awesome. That's awesome. So coming out of COVID where, you know, our brains, our excitement uh, was probably super peaked and kind of dulled a little bit after the trauma of going through a pandemic. How did you find that um, one plan helped you rebound from that and kind of get your head back in the game? Yeah. So one plan was just great because it's very much a drag and drop program. Um, I didn't have to scale anything. I didn't have to do any math equations on a scratch pad next to me. Um, at the time I was doing it on metric and here in the States, we use the Imperial system. Um, but it was still leaps and bounds faster than anything I could have ever done in Photoshop. Uh, so by the time I signed up for the free trial, there was a 30 day free trial. And then we renewed after that for like a couple months to get us through the festival. I had had the map built in about a week, I would say. Um, it had most of the elements of the, the map on there in about a week, and then was just fine tuning the labels and readjusting things. So uh, speed of, of getting the job done was incredible. And the, just not having the resistance of techno just like working against technology and technology working against you, um, the emotional, <laughs> the emotional weight was lifted from, from that task and a task that I generally enjoy. Um, I like site planning and I like organizing and, and be, and having ownership over the festival like that, but doing it in Photoshop without that background was just impossible. <laughs> Yeah, it's challenging. Hey, it's I, that's something that I personally, as an event planner, love about One Plan is that it, I call it the great equalizer. You know, we have folks planning community birthday parties all the way up to you know Olympic style events. So it's really a, an excellent entryway into event planning. You can make it as technical or as not uh, as you need. What was roughly what was the time frame when you were planning using your old planning tools versus you said a week for using one plan? What is the con the contrast there between your old style and the new way? Yeah, so with Photoshop, I would say I was doing the map for like two weeks and spending hours, hours every day working on it, chipping away at it. Like we're a small team, so I couldn't. I couldn't devote a whole day to it because I was also answering the phones and doing customer service. Um, so one plan really enabled me to be able to kind of handle all of the responsibilities of an associate producer, which is really a catch all kind of role. You know, you do a little bit of everything and you, you get down in the mud and you do whatever is needed to, to get things done. Um, but one plan really en enabled that. So I would say, yeah, it was two weeks, probably three to four hours every day with Photoshop and then a couple of late nights right before the festival, right before we had to print the map. Uh, and then with one plan, like I, it was a week with like an hour tops every day. So it was amazing. And I'm not a seven day week, like a five day week, a work week. A work so week. Yeah. A yeah. Work that's great. Incredible. Um, and there was some fine tuning along the way. I've certainly spent more time in it since, since that initial, initial, like just drop all the elements on there, but uh, it's incredible. That's awesome. And I've seen it's your awesome. site map and our whole team has seen your site map. Uh, we've written a case study about it. It's you've done a magnificent job using the tools and also the feedback of where you'd like things to improve and be different. Um, we love to take that to heart. And I think um, I don't want to give any spoilers, but we've got some pretty significant uh, features coming that I think are just going to make you and everyone else uh, extra excited. But for now, I must zip it. So <laughs> the webinar that we um, are focusing on today, it's all about how to plan your event uh, easily. If you had to give event planners three pieces of advice, uh, maybe a new event planner or even a more seasoned one based off of your experiences, what would they be? Ooh. <sighs> Put you on the spot there. Paul, the yes, choice. seriously. Um, I would say when information comes in, process it immediately, whether mm -hmm. that's like I can't address this right now, but I'm putting it in a folder that says I can address this now, but don't just take one detail out of correspondence and run with it. Put, find a home for every single thing in there. So we work from a bunch of different spreadsheets 
And if you just pick the one thing from it, I have a sponsor that needs this size tent. I can email my tent vendor, get that put on our list. But if I don't write that information down immediately, there are so many other details that are flying at you. It's important to process information as it comes in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's number one, I would say. That's being on a small team and managing all the details, the most important thing I would say. Um, hmm. You really did put me on the spot with this one. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I know that you got to keep you on your toes, right? I think what you said about the tents and I'm um, keeping the information flowing is so key. And if I can, again, just link back to one plan is, you know, how easy it is to open it up, grab a tent, plop them down. You can add the dimensions. You can even send off a quote to your supplier at the click of a button, as well as put in the information. And then also start building out those vendor layers so that your vendor manager or probably you can then quickly communicate um, with the vendor. So that's a really good one. And I, I highly, I highly appreciate that one. Yeah. And I actually has, was playing around with some of those tools today. In fact, um, previously in our first iteration of the festival and the plan with one plan, um, the plan with plan. <laughs> great name. <laughs> it was on purpose. No. We planned that. We planned that. <laughs> oh no. Oh so, man. <laughs> gotta stop. <laughs> gotta stop. That's funny. All right. So that's one really good point. I'm not going to pressure you for points two or three unless they come jump in. I think that's really the key though, is as the live event producer slash planner, you can plan as much as you want and have everything look good on paper. But it is really critical that you can kind of fly by the seat of your pants and make it happen and make those changes. Um, has there been an instance where you've been on site and the festival is a go or you're in those initial pre-fest days where you've had to pivot and make a change? And if that happened with one plan, how did that help you with those quick and easy uh, pivots? Yeah, so those happen all the time. Um, vendors want a specific spot on site as the vendor coordinator. I also get to handle those requests or demands. Um, I had a vendor that had just kind of plopped their stalls down where they wanted, not according to the map, even though they knew that where they were supposed to go. Um, it's always really frustrating in the moment dealing with that, but because of the ease of one plan and how like it's just drag and drop, just slide things around. I had to move probably about five to six different tents and stalls Ooh. to fix that problem. But yeah. um, I had my, my iPad pro with me on site and was able to kind of tweak the layout while I was standing there in our space, looking at it. And that was incredible um, to, to be able to stand there and, and look at all the tents that were set up and the vendors that were already set up and say like, okay, here's the bird's eye view. I can this person hasn't arrived yet. They don't know where they're going to be. I'm going to move them here. And they're none the wiser. Um, it's, it makes problem solving a lot easier, uh, mm -hmm. having a tool that can work as quickly as you think. Yeah. Yeah, I think you said it best. That that's it's a live change, and if you're collaborating with a team, the second you change something, you know they'll see it. It's important that we don't lose those important on the fly or any changes to another outdated spreadsheet or you know a Slack message that maybe didn't hit home because our Wi-Fi is you know wonky or whatever the case is. And I think that's awesome, and I'm so glad that that was easy. And I'm also so sorry that that happened to you because. Whoo, that was an on the fly, a uh, quick thinking decision. Yeah. So we're coming up on the end of our time here. I have one fun, non-threatening, easy to answer question. <laughs> um, we've all kind of been inside for longer than we have ever wanted to be. Now that events are kicking up into high gear and we're getting out and seeing things. What is the one event aside from Soulfest that you are just itching to take in? Is it a sporting event, a concert? you know, a marathon, maybe, what are you looking forward to? Oh, you know, I can't go to it because it's immediately after soul fest. And, you know, if you're in events, you know, about the, the post event you'll, slump, like it's happy. just, you're comatose <laughs> yeah. afterwards, but there's a festival, um, 
in Tennessee, mm-hmm. Kentucky, Kentucky. Uh, now I'm spacing on it. I had it in my head. Um, that's okay. That's okay. We'll Google it. There's one, there's <laughs> one that's in Kentucky. It's like a bourbon Real bird. and something one. What? Railbird. Yes. We're on the yes. same wavelength. Great. I love it when that happens. I, I love bourbon. Um, I'm not much of an equestrian, but I think that's a very cool landscape. And when I think of, you know, as an event producer and customer experience, like the, the location, their mission, the vibe, it all just works really well together. And it's, and it's a relatively new festival. So I feel like, you know, it, I know that they did grow massively in their second year and they had some growing pains with that last year. It was followed them on Twitter and, (laughs) but I still want to go. I think it'd be a great experience. And I want, I want to be a customer for that one. I want to be an attendee um, rather than work behind the scenes. I don't get to do that a whole lot. No, but you know what, when you do work behind the scenes, you watch, it's a different experience, even as a customer, but I'm with you. And you know what, maybe if the stars align, we'll both be there and we can both sit there and be like, I wonder if they're using one plan. I wonder if they put that. <laughs> I love that for us. We need to make it happen. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk after. We'll talk after. <laughs> Rena, thank you so much for joining me today. I loved hearing what you had to say. And um, I just really look forward to partnering with you in the future and seeing all the fun things that SoulFest has to offer. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. It was a pleasure. You're welcome. You're welcome. We'll chat soon. Sounds good. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and thank you to Rana for that awesome conversation. I can't wait to see you at that festival. Now we've got some time for some Q&A. If you have any questions about any of the content in the presentation thus far, please pop it in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. I see a little note from our uh, friend Fred. Hey Fred, how's it going? We'll give it a few minutes to see if any questions roll in. Okay, I see a question. It's a good question. I see a question about pricing. Yes, if you go to oneplanevents.com slash pricing, you'll see our pricing chart there. As I mentioned earlier, you do get one event uh, with one planner for free. And for a lot of people, that does the trick. Uh, when, you, when you're ready and you need more, you need more events, you need more sharing capabilities as outlined in the chart, you can go ahead and upgrade. Now, because we are a monthly subscription, you're not locked into a contract. You're going to be using that service for that month. So go ahead and enjoy that service for a month. If you have a high peak planning period, you can upgrade for a couple of months and then go back down. And you can kind of leapfrog throughout the tiers, whatever works best for your business. It's all self-manageable within the platform. So you can do that too. Good question. All right, we have another question. Uh, If I have more questions, can I book a demo? Yeah, of course you can. There's a few ways that you can do that. You can do that on our website. We've got lots of book a demo tabs. Lots of teams around the world. We've got team members in Australia, Latin America, the UK, Germany, Switzerland, the US, Canada, uh, folks all over the place. So if you like and you are in North America, you can even go ahead and reach out to me directly. My, uh, You can find me on LinkedIn or you can reach out at heather.bray at oneplanevents.com. Another question. Can you export latitude longitude on the CSV pin export? At this time, we don't have that functionality. We do have some functionality where we can import GPX maps, but the other way, we haven't developed that yet. But thanks, Maxime. That's a great question, and it's good to see you. It's been a long time. There's got to be some more questions. Don't be shy. All right, we've got another one. I mentioned in the in the video, and I think this is what it was referring to, many maps within one. And if we, um, if I had it open here, I would show it to you. But when you look into the placed objects, you'll see that every single item has an eye beside it. And you can go ahead and filter through the events. Now that functionality is going to be upgraded and changing for a little while, um, or in a little while. So it might be different than what I'm explaining now. But essentially, the functionality exists so that you could have many maps in one. Say you've got your whole site map and you've got your your porta potty. Your porta potty is listed all throughout your map. You can go through, filter that through to a view where 
only the information that the porta potty supplier needs to see will be available to them. They don't need to see the back house stuff. Maybe they don't need to see any of the uh, hospitality sections, although they just probably should have potties. Um, but yeah, you can uh, separate the map view and create many different maps within one. All right, Phil, 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 Phil says, I signed up for the free trial, but plans for the site were unavailable in one plan, so I was unable to use it. Can I request updates for specific locations? I haven't heard of this happening, but I'm glad that you brought it up. Different locations have different mapping opportunities. So I know in the UK, they've got the ordnance survey maps. And Australia has um, another supplier. Here in North America, we use the Google Suite as well as um, as uh, near maps, so the HD, the HD imagery. If you weren't able to find the plan on one plan, um, it could be you maybe needed more specific directions in the details tab. Uh, on a case by case basis, I'd have to look into it to see what it was. Can you request updates for specific locations? Um, I believe we can talk to suppliers. There's usually a cost involved with that when we do a specific pull, but um, reach out to support at oneplanevents.com and one of our team will be able to help you for sure. Thank you for that question. Chris, Chris Cheney, is there a tool to print the map? May need to hand out to volunteers at entry points for load in. Thanks. Yes. So this is really exciting. There's a few ways that we can share within one plan. One of them is using the tool that is inside. You can share uh, share the plan. People can view it in view only mode, or if you want them to have access to administrate and make changes and work alongside you, you can do that too. Um, another way we can uh, grab the map is to take a screenshot using your computer. And there are ways that you can... Um, to uh, there are ways that you can create an H an HD map so it's easily printable. And if you need more information on that, again, reach out to support at oneplanevents.com and we'll walk you through it. And a little secret, we've been working on this for a really long time and we have heard our users. The number one thing that they've been asking for is a really great way to get their map out of the computer. So if you've worked in a production office, we're all familiar with those giant CAD maps with the legends along the bottom. And we're really excited to let you know that our product for this, our solution is in its final stages of testing. We will soon have an export to PDF functionality full with a legend. Um, it's pretty slick and I think it's gonna change everything for how our planners use one plan. So yeah, Chris, it's, it's on the way. Thanks for asking. All right, we are nearing up on our hour here. If you have any other questions, now's a great time to ask them before we wrap up for the woohoo. Yeah, woohoo, Chris, indeed. We think that too. We're very excited about it. Um, I'm glad to see your excitement there. Excellent. Yeah. Just a reminder here, we can reach out. Uh, you can reach out to us at support at oneplanevents.com. You'll be matched up with uh, a person in your time zone and they'll be able to walk you through any questions that you have. So we are at five minutes to the hour. If there are no further questions, I'm going to go ahead and, and shut this down. But thank you so much for hanging out with us over the hour. Thank you again to Rena for um, speaking to me about your experiences. And we hope that Soulfest goes off without a hitch, as I know it will uh, this year. And for those of you with questions, visit our website. And again, support at oneplanevents.com. Thanks for attending, and we'll chat soon. Bye.